IRS did the UN, mm. and you yourself did. Yeah. Uh, that ceasefire was rejected. Mm. What's the position now? Well, I, th I think we still need a ceasefire. I think it's undoubtedly I essential. And I think we've got to be very careful. If you, know, you, you cannot say categorically that these things are not happening. You're saying there's no genocide, there's no bombing. Well, you know, there's a lot of evidence to suggest a huge number of civilians are being killed. And if they're not being killed by bombs, how are they being killed? You know, there's well, hospitals being destroyed. Tigers. No, that, oh, that's silly. No, that you talk to the people going to Trincomalee. That is stupid. The, the refugees in Trincomalee. Uh, uh, one at a time, please. Uh, uh, stupid. Michael, you can you let Robert... Wait, 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 wait. Can we let Robert finish his answer. It's stupid yeah. to suggest that the Tamils are bombing their own hospitals, their oh own people in oh. the Vani in their own controlled oh. areas. That I, know that. I know that. I know that sounds a bit awful. It sounds it's ridiculous to suggest. Oh, okay, like can, can, can we go I'm to an right. audience? I'm going to bring you all in. An audience question from Samuel Haig, please. Where are you, Samuel? Ah, hi. Hi, my question is what can the international community, especially the US and India, can help to bring about peace to Sri Lanka. Now, Douglas, can I put that question to you? Because it's quite interesting that the British government appointed uh, former Defence Secretary Des Brown as the peace envoy for Sri Lanka, which apparently has been rejected by the Sri Lankan government, which is slightly surprising. What about international pressure and involvement? Is there going to be any I future think it, there? Yeah, international pressure should be brought on the LTT. The, well, uh, the, no, I'm asking the you supporter. about the Sri Lankan government. Yes, the Sri Lankan government, I mean, you cannot have other people meddling in these affairs in the <laughs> sense of, now, the, the allegations that are being made about genocide and then ethnic cleansing, discrimination, I mean, these words are, are used by Tamils not in the normal manner of the English term, what you now, would understand. Douglas, the point is that over the years, we've had more or less permanent engagement by Norway in this. We've had the US, the UN, India, Britain, the EU as a whole, all trying to promote some kind of peaceful future. There have been ceasefires, there have been end of ceasefires. Is there a way forward that the international community can play a part since, to bring about peace for Sri Lanka? Since 1985, We've had, the government has had discussions with the LTT starting from Bhutan and from Nepal. It has gone on right up to 2006. Now, 2003, that during the ceasefire, Tamils walked out of the thing. And before that, prior to that, from Bhutan itself, every time the ceasefire was on, the Tamils walked out, but they used that ceasefire time to get arms train their cadres, and, this, and they have brought huge amounts of weapons, and this is how the ceasefire. And during the last few years of the ceasefire, they no, killed... I'm, looking, I'm trying to look forward here. Yeah, they is killed, there a role for the international they, community now? Yeah, they killed... No, they killed on, the, forward, forward. Yeah, they killed the, 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 uh, the Tamil people there. No, <coughs> now, forward, please. Yeah, the forward is that we cannot... A democracy cannot tolerate terrorism. So the, the countries will have to help the international community will have to help to defeat terrorism because these communities can live peaceably. Just as the Muslim but is gentleman there a role said. for the international community or not now? No, there is no role for, at okay, the moment fine. for the international right. community. Okay, okay. Sure, yeah. you and, and the LTTE have been very involved in lots of negotiations, mainly hosted by Norway and others. Do you see an international role that can help the process forward in Sri Lanka? Sure, I mean, not me personally, but... Um, well... Yeah. Um, ha however... The international community has a, a very important role to play in this matter because it's no, not anymore an internal matter. It's, it's responsibility to protect the civilians of the Tamil civilians in Sri Lanka. Just like the Bosnians were massacred by the Serbians and Tony Blair took a decision to go militarily to stop that massacre. Just like in Rwanda and in Cambodia, the international yeah, community... What can they do now? They should first call and implement a permanent ceasefire so that the people can be saved. And international community should send um, assistance, uh, humanitarian assistance. There is no antibiotics. There is no oxygen in the Vani area. People are dying because there is no food. No, hang on. So, I'm asking so the what the international community can like, do. Like I said, they should call for a ceasefire and implement a ceasefire. They should send medical aid okay. and, and uh, food and uh, humanitarian supplies and then they should participate in the peace process okay. All right. so that there will be a permanent solution, uh, Lord, a political solution. Can I bring in Lord Nays with this point? Uh, uh, Michael, you've spent many years involved with yeah. Sri Lanka and indeed in, been involved in many of these discussions yeah. and negotiations. Is there now a role for the international community despite the yes, rejection must, the, by the Sri Lankan government? The international, government, uh, <coughs> international agencies must continue, the co-chairs, the UN, the US, India, to appeal 
to the Tigers to release the civilians. They're not, those civilians must be given a safe passage out. And that appeal must continue. And those countries, the international community, must stop the money going to the Tamil Tigers. Do you and think I'm sorry, Tamil Forum are one of the areas where the money is coming do from. Do you think though, the Sri Lankan army should also be involved in a ceasefire? No. No, because these are terrorists. <laughs> and this is a duly elected government. They can either lay down their arms, which will be respected then, and that's absolutely right. Immediately they lay down their arms, okay. then there must be an international uh, element to right. go in and make sure they're safe. Mm -hmm. But they have to lay down their arms. That's what they must do. Can I bring Robert in at this point? Robert, the EU has brokered ceasefires in a number of places around the world, sometimes successfully, sometimes unsuccessfully, but it has made those efforts. Are we just recreating colonial problems here, and should we not be involved as the European Union, or do you think there is a real role? I, I think there's a real international role, and I've called for, and I'll repeat tonight, I think there should be UN peacekeeping forces in there to supervise what's going on. And if, if, I will be the first, I'll tell you, I will be the first to stand back and say, yes, I was wrong. If the UN peacekeeping forces go in there and say, there's no evidence of being any, any bombing, there's no evidence of anybody suffering, uh, or whatever. And if the Sri Lankan government and their supporters are so sure of their case and so convinced of everything, why are they refusing to allow... Right, I'm Can I... Why... <laughs> why will they... All right. Why will they not let proper press... All right. Press and television coverage. Why will they not let all the journalists go in there to see what's happening? Okay. Can, right right well, can I now take the, the, the discussion? Friends, well, can I now take the discussion anymore. slightly further forward? Despite the panel shouting across me, I'm going to ask each of them now, in about 25 seconds each, to give us something positive about the future. How they see things going forward for the future of Sri Lanka, despite all the bloodshed and all the killings over the past years. Douglas. Well, just as what is happening now in the eastern region, the, the, the Tamils broke away from the LTT. You must be very and, brief. Sorry? Yeah. Brief. And, and, and now we have been able to establish democracy in the eastern province. And this okay. can be done in the northern <laughs> province as well. It's Surin, a laughable matter. We had election and the chief minister was Thank appointed. You. All right, Surin, a way forward, please. I think uh, the international community should in, get involved and a peace talk should be done and uh, they should negotiate how two suppressed friendly nations Michael. can survive together. Thank you, Michael. The international community must stop the flow of money, then we can have full and fair elections, and then the British government can uh, deliver on the promise they made to give substantial help Thank you. to northern Sri Lanka. Robert, last word. I, I'd like to have a, an immediate ceasefire to let the humanitarian aid get in. I'd like <coughs> UN or other international peacekeeping forces. I'd like an independent person like Senator George Mitchell peace broking uh, in Northern Ireland. And I'd like respect for the rights of all three communities uh, in Sri Lanka. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid, and I'm very sorry, that's all we've got time for. Once again, if you would like to be part of the audience here in London, please call our hotline on 0208 728 6472 or send us an email at forum at presstv.co.uk. So from me, Jeremy Corbyn, it's goodbye. Until next time.